sorry for the delay in my in my next video on uh, problem solving tricks uh, i was busy with my uh, revision of, of my books for this year and hence uh, i was not able to regularly update the videos but uh, i guess you can look forward to a lot of uh, new videos coming from time to time from me and i have picked up an interesting question to discuss in this uh, uh, video that has got a huge learning uh, uh, possibility in the context of what uh, you take away from this question so uh, the question read uh, consider two different clock cutting processes in the first one n circular clock pieces are cut from a square clock piece of side a in the following steps the original square of side a is divided into n smaller pieces n smaller squares not necessarily of the same size then a circle of maximum possible area is cut from each of the smaller squares in the second process only one circle of maximum possible area is cut from the square of side a and the process ends there the cloth pieces remaining after cutting the circles are scrapped in both the processes the ratio of the total area of scrap cloth generated in the former to that in the latter is so have you understand this question and uh, before you uh, watch the video uh, from this point before you watch it ahead i would want you to think about how you'll solve this question you know your geometry you know your geometry formulas think about how you'll solve this question this is a question from uh, from cat again and i want you to think about this for a few seconds before i come in and solve this for you so let's look at the solution now so what's happening here is that there are two processes of clock cutting here so there's there's a square clock piece of side a you have this circle with this uh, uh, inside the square and you're cutting this uh, circle out and obviously the clock the scrap generated will be this area now when you look at this question uh, the the target of this question is obviously the the, the ratio of the square scrap generated so if you look at this question what happens inside this question is that uh, this is one process and you can calculate the scrap of this because you have a diameter the side of the square is a so the diameter of the circle is a so the radius of the circle is a by 2 Right, so so you can find out the uh, area of the square minus the area of the circle to get the square generated here, and if you if you calculate that, you get a square, which is the area of the square, minus pi r square, which is the area of the circle, and this becomes your area of square generated here, and people start solving this question this way, and in the second process, uh, as they say. they are looking at creating n square pieces from the original square of side a so in the second process the same square is now divided into n square pieces small squares now although the question specifically mentions that these squares have to be need not be the same size for simplicity we can actually do the same size and try to see what happens and obviously the process will be this and you can imagine what you need to do here so so that circle of the largest possible area within each of the squares would look like that and uh, you have an side a of the original square so the square here will be a by 2 in this case i have divided into four squares so this side will be a by 2 it's the same process of this uh, where you found the area of the scrap generated uh, by the area of the square minus the area of the circle you can do the area of the scrap generated here also by the area of the square minus the area of the circle only thing is the square side is a by 2 and the circle uh, radius is a by 
and you can solve this and then, then you will have four similar areas here so you will multiply it by four to get so whatever let's say s is the scrap generated in this uh, in this uh, picture in this part of the picture so four times s will be the total scrap generated and then you can find the ratio and match it to the options as you can imagine this process will take a very long time to do and inside the exam this would uh, kind of uh, eat your head up drastically because you, you can imagine inside the exam you are under pressure you want to get the, through the question fast you make one calculation mistake somewhere here there which is very likely to happen in something like this because you are doing a square, man, a square by 4 minus pi a square by 16 and then doing the LCN etc it's going to be, become really tedious solving it this way and the minimum time you will take if you solve it this way will be 3 to 4 minutes why I picked up this question is because it's got a 15 second approach and that approach is based on similarity you need to understand similarity before you start solving this question when you talk about similarity unfortunately we have been taught similarity only for triangles but similarity does, is not only restricted to triangles similarity exists for any two objects so if I have an object in my hand let's say I have this object in my hand a similar object is an object which looks exactly same but can have a different size so if I am talking about a different size what happens is between two similar objects is all length ratios are expanded or contracted in the same in the same ratio so if I want to make a similar looking pen if I want to make the same pen, pen I need a congruent object but if I may need to make a similar looking pen I can multiply each of the lengths by, by 2 for instance or 3 for instance so if I if I take this vertical and I, and I double it then all the length measures have to double so even the nib has to double these, the diameter of the circle below has to double every aspect of it has to double because if I do twice on this vertical and thrice on this uh, uh, two times on, on, the, on the height and three times on the diameter of the base then it will not be a similar looking pen so the basic logic of similarity is that two objects which are similar to each other maintain the ratio of lengths first point second point is that they maintain the area ratio also so whatever areas you see on this picture on this uh, on this uh, uh, object the area of a similar object will be squared what you did to the lens so if you multiply the length by 2 then all the area measures here will get multiplied by 4 that's the logic and volumes of course get cubed so if you multiply the lens by 2 the areas will get multiplied by 4 and the volumes get multiplied by 8 so if you understand that you can see this question from similarity angle and if you look at these, this picture and that picture they are similar to each other and if these two pictures are similar this picture the, the image here all the lengths are half and if the lengths are half the areas are one fourth so if this area is one fourth all the areas inside this picture including the scrap area will be one fourth the scrap here and since there are four such squares adding all of them together you are always going to get a 1 is to 1 ratio so the answer is clearly 1 is to 1 and it's a 15 second solution if you try to do this let's say with 9 squares instead of 4 suppose you, you decide that you will make 3 vertical and 3 horizontals rows and columns and you draw a circle in between this side is getting this side again is similar to this side this picture and this picture are similar to each other and the side lengths are getting one third so the area lengths will be, area area ratio will become one ninth and you can see nine areas in this nine equal uh, squares with their own circles so nine scrap areas generated here and 9 is to 1 will again make it 1 is to 1 and hence this is a 15 second solution unfortunately most of us never realize uh, the, the use of similarity because maths taught, taught, taught us similarity only in the context of triangles hope you enjoyed this video look forward to more coming from my side thanks a lot